Right then, uh, we'll start, Chanaki. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the short walkthrough that we have organized for you today for Windows Virtual Desktop. I'm sure we all have heard about it a little that Microsoft has come up with in the current uh, cloud offerings and one of the most, uh, you know, marketed technology that uh, Microsoft is willing the organizations to use. But before we actually go to the technical depth of those uh, things like WVD, we need to evaluate it as a product as to what it can provide, how it can be productive and cost effective within our working environment and what exactly is the WVD platform. Before I begin with what exactly the WVD platform is, uh, it is very important for all of us to know that the time that we are facing today is much demanding in terms of technology as compared to what we had earlier. Like we want uh, our environment, we want our users to be connected and to be productive like never before. We have our employees, our end users who are working from different locations trying to access the data trying to access the resources from where they are work from home is becoming the new normal accessing the corporate resources the applications from over the internet over the high speed internet i would say at my uh, maybe at my residence or maybe sitting at some cafe um, on a device which is a part of some compliance that is something which is uh, you know rapidly being adapted and that is something which is going to be the trend of you know digitization in our enterprise infrastructures while all of this is happening there are certain challenges which cannot be uh, you know unseen some challenges which we cannot overcome and one amongst them is availability of resources when I say availability of resources, what I'm exactly meaning over here is we have people from different, uh, you know, uh, departments. We have uh, people from different, different uh, verticals who are working, working on different segments, etc., who need different type of computes. So probably if I have an end user who's working on some high end graphics animation and stuff he will require a graphic intensive unit on which they can perform if i have somebody who is going to work on some kind of web-based application and stuff they are going to require those uh, coding applications installed on their system now for every organization for i would say for, for every small and medium organization or even for the enterprises it becomes really to meet the bandwidth of providing the user with the necessary hardware and device in place probably if I have an end user who is working from home on his own laptop, I cannot expect him to probably have a laptop at his place for 16 gigs of RAM or maybe, you know, uh, uh, a premium SSD or something of that sort. They will have something which is going to be a, a really, really basic system or a system which probably might meet my needs or maybe not. I might not expect my user to be able to work as seamlessly as they could have worked if they were in office. To overcome these challenges, there were multiple solutions that were being offered. And even Microsoft Azure was offering some solutions in collaboration with Citrix, in collaboration with VMware Horizon, etc. It was then that Microsoft introduced Windows Virtual Desktop native on-premise technology called as remote desktop services the rds the ts web service was then brought to the cloud and the cost was optimized to an extent that every organization could afford it apart from the cost the licensing was brought down there was a whole new platform of wvd which has been which was introduced in integration with your microsoft 365 security and compliance suit and at the same time managed and controlled by microsoft azure 
making it the most versatile and the most uniform platform that could be provided to any user to work from anywhere they are while we talk about virtualization scenarios when i say virtualization scenarios i am talking about giving my users the flexibility to work from where they are there will be a lot of parameters that i need to put into consideration without which remote working would become a highly vulnerable option to think about the very first component that i would i would that would worry me is the security and regulations that the uh, uh, typical organizations would follow so maybe uh, um, a pharmaceutical organization a medical company or maybe financial institutions maybe uh, banking sectors government organizations that are dealing with critical critical user data might probably not always want to have everything coming out of the cloud because they don't want the data to be accessed from over the cloud honestly elastic workforce i have probably got versatile um, set of employees as i told you some might be working on high end applications or high compute requiring applications like dynamics and stuff some might be working on internally customized applications so some uh, might be working on sap at the same time when i talk about these kind of versatile employees i also will be having people apart from employees who would be working on these applications inside my organization so probably i will have different uh, employees from different contractors i might have auditors i might have temporary external employees i might have employees who are from a venture which just collaborated with my company and all of these want to work on the applications that are being provided from within my organization while i try to meet this particular requirement there is something else also which needs to be kept in mind and that is the typical you know range of devices from where the users will access this it can be their mobile device which can be an android which can be an ios which can be a windows phone it can be their windows based desktops or laptops it can be mac or macbooks it can be any device from where they would want to access this particular data or access this particular resources and lastly i will also have to consider the connectivity or the location from where the users are actually willing to access some information like this when i want to bring all of these under consideration offering something from over the cloud might become really really challenging but with virtual desktop that's not the case virtual desktop as an instance running in the cloud but fetching all the information from your on premise so practically speaking none of your data is going to you know lie in the cloud all the data will be saved in your on premise on your data boxes all the data will be as per the security regulatory and compliances of your organization yet being accessed from over a cloud secured network the moment the user will release the access to the instance in the cloud the accessibility is gone precisely leaving behind nothing on the device from where they were accessing so probably if i am sitting on my laptop i want to access all my corporate resources i hit the wvd environment i take the access once my work is done i close the access nothing is left on my desktop no traces nothing of the data is going to lie in the cloud no information leaked accessed and back to be saved in the on premise data box so wvd is precisely going to offer you a multi session windows 10 for the first time ever in the history of client operating systems it supports office 365 professional plus you seamlessly migrate from your on premise infrastructure on premise ds web or rds infrastructure to wvd and this is deployable and scalable in many
Depends on your requirement. You need additional computes. It can spin it up in a couple of simply scale it down in a couple of minutes. So practically speaking, not only does this get you the best ROI by saving your capex and opex, but at the same time, it is one of its kind desktop based virtualization system being offered in the cloud saving your data completely in your on-premise yet giving you an option of a consumption based model isn't it great so while we talk about windows virtual desktop we need to precisely understand as to from where this wvd as a concept is coming up in our native environment, we had something called as Windows Server RD session hosts on Windows Server operating systems. These RD session host servers used to support Win32 applications. You used to invest on server CALs. You used to invest on RD CALs. You need to, need to invest on the perpetual office licenses. At the same time, you would also have to invest on a Windows client operating system, the typical Windows 10 enterprise. For the first time ever, as I said and as I repeat, Windows 10 has come up with a multi session operating system, meaning a Windows 10 enterprise operating system can be used to satisfy the functionalities of the RDS service which I had in my on-prem servers and at the same time to get the best of UI the way Windows 10 Enterprise exactly has. So practically speaking, Windows 10 multi-session is nothing more than the actual Windows 10 Enterprise with almost all the features and some additional ones, of course, than the Windows Server RD session host. In spite of having its own solution of WVD, Microsoft did not step back from its collaboration with Citrix. So instead, they actually introduced Citrix as a collaboration with WVD. So if I'm offering you which I'm supposed to publish applications for your remote access, I can achieve that using Citrix if component. As I said, it is a thorough blend of the Microsoft ecosystem. So when I talk about accessing WVD inside my environment, I have Windows Virtual Desktop collaborating with Microsoft 365 security suit in order to make sure that I am giving the access to the most deserving, most relevant user and not to anybody else. It will be controlled using Microsoft Azure compliance. The only cloud provider having more than 90 plus compliance offerings. More than 3,500 global cybersecurity experts working in the back end 24 by 7 to evaluate whether your environment is safe or not. And by every passing year, the investment that Microsoft makes in improvising its security platform so that more and more customers in Azure can safely save their data. So when you implement WVD, it comes along with Microsoft 365 security, Azure compliance services, and then at the end, controlled using the most versatile modern authentication platform that is Azure Active Directory on almost every single application that you wish to collaborate with. Making sure that your environment is all the time shielded, may the user access it from anywhere. While we talk about WVD, this particular thing was precisely introduced in order to minimize the cost because when we talk about RDS as a service, RDS is something which is not to deny a fact, a 
and uh, I mean, I would say a really, really expensive service. So while we talk about WBD, what they actually did was they enhanced the security with M365 and Azure. At the same time, they brought in new use cases for your different categories of users. And lastly, minimized the cost to an extent like never before. So hosting a WVD environment as compared to an RDS environment, the cost might nearly come down by at least 35 to 40%. The good part is there are a lot of customers across the industry who are already eligible for using WVD. So it's not that every customer who wants to use WVD needs to procure additional or new licenses. Customers who are already using Microsoft 365 suit like E3, E5, A3, A5, uh, Microsoft 365 Business Premium, F1, and your Windows 10 VDA users they by default have the wvd licenses available with them secondly the customers who are already having server licenses server rds licenses yes for example if your organization already has remote desktop server licenses in place you can practically use those licenses to have your wvd environment set up in azure this cost benefit itself brings it down by at least 40 to 45 percent when it comes to the licensing of the servers windows virtual desktop is supported on thin clients on windows 10 iot enterprise and igl for linux very soon it will also be supported on wvd linux sdk so it's like each time i have my workers trying to access any kind of a compute there will be a new workload spinning up in the background trying to give them the most relevant access and the moment the users are done accessing their resources all the additional resource additional uh, computes that might have been deployed in the back end will be terminated making sure that i'm saving on the cost front Another step of brilliance in WVD is that whatever you do, there is very little that will be under your control. Meaning, the entire platform will be managed by Microsoft. The compute, the storage, the entire infrastructure will also be managed by Microsoft. That's by the cloud. Assuring you uh, nothing less than 99.9% .9 SLA. And lastly, what you will have to look into it as an end customer or as an end WVD user is only going to be limited to identifying the operating system, the server, and the remote applications that you would want to publish. Nothing more than this is going to be required from your end. Rest all will be taken care of by Microsoft itself. So you simply select the OS, select the apps, jot it down, make the necessary project plan, and proceed with the implementation of WVD. It's that simple. WVD is not something that you will have to, uh, you know, have a different uh, portal altogether or a different management interface. It is integrated inside your Azure portal itself. So all the management that you would want to do can be done from within the Azure portal. Whatever configuration you want to do can be done from within the Azure portal itself so ultimately speaking wvd is the best of windows virtualized windows experience from anywhere on any device on any operating system platform it supports direct rdp clients on windows 10 and 7 it can be an html5 based web based page it can be accessed directly on an android or a mac os or an ios and it is also available on thin clients like windows 10 iot and linux sdk
while you will be accessing these kind of instances of WVD, your overall user experience and the user interface is going to remain the same, except for something which might be of a question. What happens if I am trying to access it from uh, uh, from you can say desktops with different resolution capacities? WVD by default offers you something called as dynamic resolution, something like this. Each time you try to set a window, it will identify the size of the window and fix the virtualized session in that window itself, depending upon which kind of a device are you trying to access it from. Something like this. So dynamic resolution, one of the key features of WVD. You can have subsets of monitor. When I say subsets of monitor, what I mean over here is. Let's say you have a WVD session being pulled out of your cloud environment and you want to project something onto a particular display or you want to connect a secondary display. WVD has the power to connect with your physical hardware to identify and get established with the physical hardware in order to have multiple monitors connected so that you can span across your display the way you do it on a physical machine. Applications like Teams, which precisely demand unified communication platform, are not something that you will have to install it on your end user machine. As I said, it can directly get integrated with your audio and with your uh, physical device drivers, with your physical machine itself. You can have the WVD session running inside the compute itself, which you are trying to pull from the cloud. Need not install it on your machine. So it is going to precisely be something like this. So practically speaking, accessing teams with an audio video redirection over your virtualized host is going to give you uh, experience which is going to be as good as what you have while you are working on your physical machine itself. So no compromise, all working as if I'm working on my local desktop. Client administration, like the instances that are running in WVD, they have their released cadence, which are going to be coming up monthly. Like I'm talking about the typical RDP versions that you have or the end device based client, like the RDP client on Android, the Mac and the iOS client on, uh, uh, I mean the RDP client on the Mac and the iOS, the same way RDP client on Windows. All of these are getting monthly updates in order to make sure that all the features introduced in WVD are met each time you try to access it without compromising on the user experience. The availability of these administration endpoints is either in your app stores or directly on the Microsoft URL. You can just hit there, get it, and get going on your end machine. There is something which got again, um, I would say revamped in a very short span of time. So when I say got revamped, what I mean is earlier the display that you access on WVD used to look something like what you have on the left of your screen, wherein you can see the frames are pretty pixelated. There is a heavy lag in accessing the uh, you know the video or the clip and the performance doesn't seem to be really great whereas the one that you see to the right is what you now get on WVD when you access it for a simple reason that if you see the frames per second they are enhanced by nearly four times as compared to what it used to be earlier in the pre-release of WVD
so by every passing month by every released update or by every new channel of wvd coming up microsoft is introducing more and more factors to have your experience as seamless as it can the same comes with multimedia playback now when i say multimedia playback it's like i'm trying to buffer probably a video from my on prem to the cloud and then probably on my desktop depending upon my network connections my experience on the video would be something like this wherein my cpu consumption would absolutely spike up and i would still have some distorted images coming in front of me in the form of a video completely compromising my experience of having that particular multimedia access over wvd but over a period of new releases today what has been done is a unique caching method that has been introduced while you are accessing these kind of multimedia files so now what happens is your access becomes something like this still keeping your cpu consumption to as low as nearly 4 or 5% this is the power of accessing your resources using wvd so practically speaking when we talk about having a remote instance from the cloud using wvd you have the complete integration with microsoft 365 you have compliance management with azure you have mobile device and mobile application management coming in place using the microsoft 365 enterprise mobility suite you can have the authentication done using azure active directory and your on premise active directory making sure that you have the most secured authentication method making sure you have the users of your on premise only accessing that particular data making sure that not the less i mean uh, not the least but you can still manage these kind of wvd instances using group policies that are there on premise yes you heard me right while you have your on premise active directory synced to azure active directory and authenticating wvd instances you can also have these wvd instances behave as domain joined machines and completely controlled by your group policies that are in the on prem environment so if you personally try to visualize how wvd would be it's simply but nothing but accessing your corporate device your corporate laptop in a browser this basically is a complete power packed platform that is being offered over azure over m365 of course you need to have the relevant licenses and the relevant subscriptions in place but once you have them in place probably wvd is something that can ease the remote access like none other like never before also whatever you do in wvd is completely a consumption based model as i mentioned earlier so practically speaking as and when i want instances i can spin them up as and when i do not want to use the instances i can simply turn them off these instances are going to run as virtual machines in the azure environment itself and since they are going to run in the azure environment as virtual machines these virtual machines can be of any series the way we have standard virtual machines in the azure environment so practically wvd is something which is automated yet making you yet giving you the option to you know control it completely from the back end the way you would control your azure virtual machines the geo availability of wvd was earlier restricted to certain regions but now it's something which is generally available across almost all the data centers of microsoft azure so accessing wvd from the closest possible data center is something which you need not worry about currently it can be accessed in the most seamless manner with all the security regulatory government compliance that you might need in place it is suitable for each and every type of business 
it is suitable for each and every type of organization and for each and every type of user so while we talk about the availability as i said that it is available from across all almost all the data centers in microsoft azure what i would want to also men sorry mention over here is that microsoft azure data centers are the only cloud provider data centers having the largest fiber coverage across the globe so again bandwidth doesn't become an issue you are able to access the resources in the speediest most I mean, uh, the speediest, most available way. Having your customers onboarded to WBD can initially be a task, little challenging, but you can simply start off by trying to figure out what the customer is using, where and how are they using, and what controls are required based on their conditions depending upon the business of the organization of course so keeping these kind of questions in mind it can be something where every organization can get a kickstart of wbd in their environment an entirely new experience of accessing the corporate resources so that brings us to an end guys of a walkthrough on windows virtual desktop we can have some question and answers now if you guys wish to have anything clarified or if any doubts that you would want me to address we can have them and then probably we should be good to wind up the session so i believe it was a good short summary on how windows virtual desktop would work or, and how it can be or how it can be of an option to you know enable in your customer's environment as i said it is something which you can be good to go in minutes so something which really every customer could think about adapting to and using within their environment thank you and now let us have the questions and answers as you might need it all right then um i think uh, chanakya i think then we are good to wind up we don't seem to have any further questions from the participants